from the south edge of Maya Pan right down to Forth Bridge. A mega herd was crossing the floodplain. Out in the open, there must have been in excess of 500 elephants. We managed to catch a glimpse of a mating pair. Young bulls were playing and it's though the imminent rain seems to be developing some vigor in all these animals. The herd was definitely moving west, just carving through the islands and floodplains. All of the elephants began to move back in towards the tree line. More rain will fall. The puddles will get bigger. The interior will saturate and all of these elephants will have to move back into the Mapani from where they came. very hot conditions and the late rains have caused these water holes to shrink and dry up. Because of the concentration of fish and such a small volume of water, the oxygen has been depleted, leaving fish gulping for air. Some of the fish have been stranded without the energy to find deeper water. Others try to wriggle free. Many have succumbed. Most of the dead seem to be tilapia or similar species, while the catfish or, or barbel seem quite comfortable and are able to survive in these harsh conditions. The barbel pushing themselves and making their way through the mud, actively feeding on and competing over the dead fish. My eye was drawn by the sun catching on some movement among the trees. And on closer inspection, I saw that there were some flies hanging by the very tips of their front pair of legs from the long supporting strands of a cobweb. The ends of the legs are white, which helps them to stand out as well. In some places, the one, one of the flies would be um, using its wings to make the strand actually vibrate up and down quite violently, uh, jiggling the other individual up and down with it as well. On a number of occasions, I saw some really quite vigorous leg rubbing going on. This appeared to feature the back pair of legs. Quite often, shortly after, one individual would fly on up to another and a great tussle <laughs> of legs would ensue. And I wondered whether there was some scent producing organ on these legs. Now, whether this was mating or fighting, I, I was unable to say it was going on far too quickly to be able to see for sure. Whatever the case, um, I'm quite sure that these flies have gathered in this manner for the purpose of mating. 
I moved on through the forest and um, saw some strands that had many individuals slung along in a, in a line, single file, each with its own little space. And with so many on a single strand, there was considerable movement going on at all times, such that it was really quite difficult to decide what was happening. I was surprised that the spiders um, seemed to tolerate uh, this uh, gross abuse of their webs, um, especially by uh, a creature that would surely be a potential food source. And for a long time, I didn't see any of the spiders um, do anything. Uh, but then one did dash into a large group of flies and emerge with one. was slightly different as Cardoso, one of the conservation guys, informed us that he was heading up the beach to excavate the remains of a green turtle nest. This clutch hatched last night. As you dig deeper you start uncovering all the old eggs. As the sand is brought out the guys go through it just to check if there are any young hatchlings that may not have had the strength to climb to the surface themselves. Their drive is to head up to the surface layer of sand and as it cools that triggers a signal that night is falling and they'll make the dash to the open ocean. And this is by far the most vulnerable stages of these turtles life. The guys count the eggs and in this particular clutch there were 113 eggs that successfully hatched. Unfortunately there were 8 baby turtles that did not make it. With green turtles the sex of the entire clutch is governed by temperature. If the temperature of the nest is above 27 degrees celsius the entire clutch will be female. And just when we thought there were no survivors, there were two youngsters. This one was the weaker of the two and he was really battling along. The other hatchling had a really strong will to live and he knew exactly where he was headed. One wave rolls up the beach and throws him onto his back, the wet sand holding him down. Lucky for him the next wave picks him up and washes him down to the water's edge. At this early stage of their life, it's quite interesting that they're actually carnivorous and they'll feed on tiny animals that they'll find floating in the debris on the currents. As they grow older, they actually become herbivorous, eating more and more seagrass. The second tiny turtle also made it to the water's edge. At this stage, instinct tells him that he needs to get out into the deeper water as here inshore you have large kingfish who are very fond of these tiny hatchlings. 